So, those sets were four or five is like already the weight with squats where it's hard for me. Like, I can rep it out, but it's still a weight where I really need to like start focusing on the movement. But today is extra especial because if you notice, I'm wearing different shoes, not my Converse's, because I keep my belt, knee sleeves, headphones, whatever, in one of the utility closets here. And maybe I just have like too much faith in people, and I assume if you come to this gym, you're more of like a family to myself, Christian, like you follow us, you like the content. But I forget there's also some pieces of shit that come to public gyms, and someone has already stolen my belt, my Enzer belt that I had for eight years. That had a sticker of dude on it. Someone stole my V2 and knock knee sleeves. So someone wanted my sweaty ass knee sleeves. And then today, I come in and someone took my used ass, dirty ass, smelly ass, off white converses that I deadlift and squat in. Was it locked, Max? No, Becky, it wasn't locked. Okay? Well then you were just asking for it to get stolen. It's your own fault. Shut the fuck up. So, in a situation where I don't have my squat shoes, what I've always done in the past, which you probably heard online, is you can just squat bare feet, because the reason that I use Converse is, besides that, besides the fact that it looks super cool my off lights, is that they have a flat sole. And I've been wearing Converse for a super long time. I did switch to Addy Powers for a little bit, but I like to complete flat surface rather than the incline. But with these shoes, or just tennis shoes in general, they're gonna have a cushion, so, Imagine like squatting on a pillow versus squatting on a concrete floor. Uh, when you're going down and going up, your foot is able to like move around in your shoe. Something like this or a sneaker, whereas Converse you're gonna be a little more locked in. So I should have just gone barefoot instead of wearing these. Uh, I'm just not a huge fan of it. it. Feels a little weird. It's kinda like lifting without a shirt on. I think I've deadlifted like twice without a shirt on. And even though it's you know, about a, most of y'all's wiener size is fit with a t-shirt, it still like throws me off, so I don't like, I don't like squatting barefoot. I like squatting in my converse, but I can't because someone stole it. So, my favorite ham dog millionaire machine is the seated leg curl. Uh, a lot of different versions of this type of exercise. You have the lying leg curl, you have the standing alternating one. Yeah, you have tons of options. This is my favorite. As you can see, it is uh, just working out wonders for me. Uh, some key points you always want to remember with this machine is how you set it up. So I like to put the foot pad a little close to my, my feet, right? So like to the edge, like to the very bottom of my ankle. That's comfortable for me. But what's important is how far back you're sitting with this pad. Uh, when you're sitting here, you want your knee to be in line with the axis of rotation, which is where this machine is like pivoting. So that's very key, because if you're too far forward, your knees will be too far, and it's just not gonna be the correct uh, type of movement this machine is set up for. And also, it has these handles. I mean, most of them are like this. They all have these handles on top, so that when you're doing the exercise, you can kind of like keep yourself back in the seat and you're holding this as you're going. But a big tip that I picked up from Scott Herman way back in the day is you take your hands like this and you actually shove it under the pad. So you wanna come around here and show them this. So you're gonna take your hands like this and you shove it right here and you're basically gonna push up on this pad. And I've found this, I've been doing this for many, many years. This really helps you just sit down and back into the seat. Whereas the heavier you go with these things, it can start having you like lift forward and your butt can scoot forward. But like this, I'm going nowhere, baby. 
But that wraps up my sick leg workout. And to be honest, I'm just gonna take these and just like set them right here if anyone wants them, you know? I mean, they already took everything else, so. So okay. I think this would be plenty of, plenty plenty of, of power, power. Yeah. packed into a small package. Yes. Computer nerds be like, oh my god, this is the 17 inch Razer with the GeForce RTX 2080. It's got up to 12 threads at 4.5 gigahertz. Ninth core into process. I'm just joking. I need to clean up. All right, so we picked up a Dell Optiplex 550 Micro. Not the world's most powerful computer, but it is tiny, so it doesn't take up a bunch of room on the desk because this is gonna go into the office at the Sour Strips HQ, which we'll show you a little bit later in the video. I'm trying to expand the team and I'm gonna hire someone to handle all of the operations side, logistics side uh, of Sour Strips so I can focus on just marketing and you know making everyone more aware of the product instead of printing out orders and handling customer service, right? De uh, delegation of tasks. So this will be perfect for that role. And I also need to pick up a surge protector. Fun fact, a power strip is not the same thing as surge protector, okay? Not all power strips are surge protectors. It's like all squares are rectangles, but not all octagons are stop signs. Okay, so I need one of these. Jewel protection. I guess it has like a little port for your jewel. I don't know. Now normally I'm a Chick-fil-A guy, but today we're gonna try something crazy. <laughs> Pollo Loco, which is the chicken loco in Spanish. Press and wing. All right, so I have heard about this place, but I've never actually eaten here. I always thought it was the same one from Breaking Bad, but that's chicken bro. Hermanos chick, Hermanos Poyos. Some sort of brother and chicken combination, but we got some rice, some mashed potatoes, and then, what the hell's that, man? What am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do with that? They said it was a breast and a wing. I don't know the anatomy of a chicken, but that looks like two wings. Wait, drumstick, that's what I wanted. What is a drumstick? Not a breast or a wing. That's probably a breast and a wing, I don't know. I mean, it just tastes like chicken. After an extensive thinking process, I have decided that El Pollo Loco is garbage. Not good. Would not recommend it. Keep going Chick-fil-A. Follow your dreams. So another necessity for the Sour Strips HQ is obviously a desk. And we have a spare one at the house because we upgraded from these ones to the deeper ones for myself and Joe. These are just kitchen tables from Ikea we screwed legs on. And my original idea for this third one, I was like, I'm gonna put all my lenses and all my camera gear and it's gonna be super organized. But as you can see, it's just a bunch of crap. So we're gonna get this out of here and put it to a good use. <laughs> Welcome to the Sour Strips official office. I know you're thinking, Max, this doesn't look like much, but why don't you check this out? Hmm. I mean, now it's like an official desk setup. Check this out. This is the whole computer right here. It's like sometimes you go into things and you're like, well, I knew it wasn't, I knew it wasn't gonna be that big, but 
This is not gonna leave me smiling and satisfied. But we're gonna throw some paint on the walls. We're gonna get these kind of hung up. You know, it'll be like that. And then like this guy will be over here. You know, get like a rug to take away some of the echo. Get like a trash can, get like a little Sonos, a little cabinet. It's gonna be lovely and it's gonna help the company be more efficient. Delegation, a max tuning project, chapter one. What? Joe! What? Help! I can't, I'm literally eating a shower taken. Joe, help! What? Quick! I can't call, I'm sorry. I'm dying. What? Help! I can't, I'm fucking naked, I'm getting my shower. Do you want to go to the movie with me? Why? Ugh. Why did I even move here, dude? I had to go to the movie by myself like a loser. I'll be back, dude. I love you. I love you. Bye. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I love you, I'll miss you! Bye, dude! Oh, I gotta go see the movie, man! I wanna see the movie, dude! Than 10, rocks in the lake. So don't call me baby! Unless you mean Say something I'm giving you know, I don't have anyone to go see the movie with me, but you know what? I don't need anyone when I have sour strips. Actual sour candy. Okay. So we are seeing, well, I'm seeing uh, Birds of Prey, the Harley Quinn movie. Uh, DC usually sucks big buttholes at their films, but I will let you know how this is. I'm excited because it's rated R and there's hot chicks in it. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so Birds of Prey rating, I'd give it about a seven and a half. It was kind of lame at times, kind of cool at times. Essentially, it was my YouTube channel. No, it was, it, was, it was visually entertaining. I liked it. Would I see it again? Probably not. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm driving this truck, it's uh, <laughs> it's because we're in Texas, baby. When you're here, you need a goddamn truck. Ow. Oh, damn, dude. That escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Well, to be honest, life in Texas is just so sweet. I mean, you know, Virginia had its ups and its downs, but Texas had nothing but ups. Specifically here in Houston. Don't even get me started on no stupid Dallas and Austin, a bunch of Nancy boys and girls. Houston's where the real Texans live. And I'll tell you what, they say there's nothing in Texas but steers and beers, specifically Bud Heavy. Don't even get me started on no Bud Light. That's for chicks. Oh man, it has just been wonderful. You know, sometimes people find Jesus. I myself found the Ford Raptor. It's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. It turned me into the man you are seeing here today. Now, I've only been driving this beauty for about 48 hours, but I tell you, I'm gonna save my pennies up and I'm gonna get me one of these one day. You know, it might take me a little bit because, uh, you know, YouTube ain't paying what it used to. Uh, down in the comment section, people get complaining, saying I'm a two-timing, no-good, having, click-baiting scoundrel. And you know what I say? Them's are fighting words. Say that to my face, partner. Say that to my face. I don't need a receipt, I'll be drinking this whole thing. <laughs> oh, okay, yep, I'll take that. Have a good one, ma'am. <sighs> you know, moving away from Texas, I haven't really thought about that since I got here, but hold on. That's so good. Ugh. Well, you know, in Virginia, I just, I felt lost. 
I didn't know who I was, but here in Texas, I'm surrounded by, you know, just a bunch of IG girls selling booty programs, and I just feel like this is, this is home. And you know, it's time to start thinking about the future, get myself a house, get myself a wife, get myself, you know, a mother for Mr. Dude over there. And you know, I, this YouTube thing, it ain't gonna be around forever. It's like my grandpappy always said, said Max, one day people are gonna wake up and smell the sour strips and realize that you're not funny and you're not entertaining. You're just annoying. But until then, here we are. Hey man, what was the whole point of this? It just seems very out of place. The, the point? Oh, it's because I, I needed to tell people why I was driving Kristen's truck. You didn't even mention why you have a truck. Oh, uh, that's because Mona's borrowing my Jeep, so that's why I have the truck. This seems pointless. It's uh, like filler content. That's YouTube, dude. That's YouTube. What is content? Is my mustache falling off? Well, I don't know. Okay.